Sri Lanka Project Posumari India and today we are not shooting from our usual location that is Ahmedabad our headquarter but sometimes you push the boundaries to break through you need to move out of your comfort zone so that's what I am doing I'm back on the road and we are on the hunt for the world's most exotic perfume ingredient and luckily I don't have to move out of India for that so here I am it's just I'm not used to that cold I'm in the colder part of India I'm not revealing what we are doing but yeah in this episode itself, it will be revealing as well. So that's why you could see I'm pretty much this Christmas tree. So it's a whole wintry feel out here. The weather is pretty cold. Being in Ahmedabad, I'm not used to this kind of cold. That's why I'm full bombarded up. So let's, let's stay tuned. We are heading the road, guys. It's just so we are on the country's largest express. Here's the another hint where we are going. Now we're not really. <laughs> so here's another hint. Might be true, this is Kakori. We are going to Kakori. So we can nash the Kakori mechanic. Guys, here we are in the ancient city of Kannauj and we are moving to the city side. So I've just taken a shared auto, waiting for other people to come. This is oh, the main GT oh, road. I'll oh. show you. Uh, this is the main GT road circle and from here there's a whole city. Oh. This is this way goes to the old city of Kannauj. Guys, we are at streets of Kannauj and Today is Tuesday, so not the whole market is pretty much closed. So this is the first samples we have picked up. One rose vetiver. We have shamava. Pretty expensive. It's a hefty affair, but worth it. I mean, I could see the difference. This is hina, and this is soil, the mitti, the petrichor. Right. So this is the first set of samples. We need to pick up some at least seven, eight sets like these more. So these costed me somewhere around 12,000 for all but then I made to bargain on it and they are putting their stamp. So we have these sealed and ready, ready to go. Those I am not, these are like how they are proper sealed and I guess these are preserved in such condition. It's like properly sealed. I don't see anything that could. Okay, so it's here. We are in streets of Kannauj. Let me show you. These are the long streets and this is our location where we are going. This is the old Attar factory and this is where I have figured out my upcoming ingredients for the next perfume. So, it's pretty excited. I've already tested most of the Attars out. I'm gonna show you this old factory out here and you'll see a lot of such factories in here. Here is a whole statue. No, it looks pretty much real. It's like musk deer. I'm not sure what kind of deer it is. It has some sharp teeth there. There is one more out here. Maybe it's for real. They have just preserved it. It's a it's an old building. It's, it gives that kind of vintage feel. And these are the one we have picked up. These are how they traditionally test it. They don't use blotters like we do. So they use on stick and cotton swabs. These are the modern way to test it. But this is like the traditional way to test it. So this is uh, sandalwood uh, or base oil I've picked up. This is. Uh, Attar Mitti I have picked up and all of these are like super expensive Shamama, this is Vetevo, the green one you can see then uh, this one is Kevra, I'm not so sure but I have to smell it and then I picked up Rose as well I have picked up two variants of uh, Jasmine Sambak oil so th that's the shopping for today I'm gonna put you guys up with reviews of all these pretty soon right, move it here and this is my second lot of shopping of Atar. Okay, we are back on the streets again. Time to say goodbye to one other place. We are going to the second now. Let's hope we find something good. We are in the streets of Kannauj and heading to one of the most legendary perfumers here. It's S. Muhammad Ayub, Muhammad Yaqub perfumers. So they have the most famous Shamama. I've already picked up three Shamamas from the market in one factory and now visiting here. Okay, I'm a little late, so I have to I fix, we schedule the meeting for tomorrow morning and they've allowed me to shoot as well, so pretty excited. You know what these all fellows smell like is authentic mitti attar, that is what I could say smelling these buffaloes. Okay, so this is how most of the attars are manufactured here. This is a traditional plant, it's off-season, so it's not, the bhattis are not on, but usually this is how they have made all the attars that I have picked up. I picked up samples for most and I'll be reviewing all of them. Streets of Kannauj, actually the highway, and we're moving. 
SAPC. That is where the sandalwood plantation happened. The guy took me SAPC for the exact thing. And check it out there and cover it. We're on the road again. We have reached SFDC, which stands for Fragrance and Flavors Development Center, which is like more of a government body in India. Let's see what we have in plate for. Okay, guys, I'm at SFDC and. Uh, uh, I've been given permission to view their plantations. They have several plantation trees. If I show you, these are all sandalwood trees in sequence that they have planted. These all the yellow ones, the yellow leaf ones are the sandalwood trees. So I could see sandalwood trees till far and I could even smell that, you know, uh, sandalwood vibe while moving around. It's not that potent because I'm already wearing a lot of others. But definitely you could feel the difference in the air. And there are couple of flowers as well which we have here and these are lemongrass plantation one of the most popular ingredient in perfumery lemongrass this is whole how we have planted lemongrass I think it's there till far this is uh, citronella citronella citronel double there grassy materials same uh, to lemongrass uh, it's similar to lemon. Okay, so important upgrade. These are all uh, lemongrass planted. There is one thing uh, you see. These are also lemongrass, but this is citronella, right? So they almost look identical, but their smells are different. The citronella, that's the lemon. And this is normal mustard. This would remind you of DDLJ, the yellow flowers that has been planted. We are at their nursery, and here they have uh, planted small sandalwood. Uh, small plants uh. so they have covered it with grass so that you know the plants could survive sandalwood is quite delicate while blooming or while uh, seeding so they use this particular okay so this is geranium plantation which smells pretty much like rose and it's more like substitute to rose because it's pretty expensive these are all geranium plants in the in these two rows <laughs> These are camphor trees. Again, they use the leaves for manufacturing of camphor. Okay, here we have one of the ingredients which I've also worked on. This is chamomile, the German chamomile here. So these are small white flowers. This is chamomile and there's a whole field out here. So guys, this is Kevda, the popular name Kevda. This is how it is. It's also called screw pine in English. So it's a huge, huge bush you could see here. And it, it's very tough to get uh, the flower, flowering of this plant uh, as per these guys. Uh, this only once where the flower has actually appeared on this one. So it's quite rare to find screw pine or kevra otherwise. And uh, the reason for this plant not to flower is because of the climate here. It's best suited in Odisha and the best of the kevra comes from Odisha. Okay, so this is a huge camphor basil bush out here. I haven't seen this big of Tulsi plant and I could probably chew it as well. Mm, yeah, it's, it's different from the regular basil we see. Okay, so this is one another interesting ingredient. This is called Monarda. So the whole thing is Monarda and I just smelled it and it actually smells like thyme, what you call ajwine. It smells exactly like that. I mean, absolutely like that a normal person would get confused that this is actually thyme but this is monarda which is the substitute for thyme actually this is ah, of our <laughs> this is oh you guys know i'm not naming it but yeah it, it's it's in abundance everywhere where you see this one no okay this smells quite earthy nature baba Okay guys, this is uh, the famous Bela tree of Kannauj. The Bela Attar is quite famous, which is one of the variety of jasmine. These are, right now, these are uh, the cut plants. This, this is not the right season, but you could see this whole Bela plantation here. Okay guys, we have vetiver. So vetiver is basically extracted from the roots. You see the whole thing here it's actually you know they'll be distilling vetiver from here december and january is basically the main period where they distill 
the way they were so because it's like pitch cold pitch dark what do we call uh, in that's the right season act to distill the vetiver and guys i can actually smell vetiver here it's very dry earthy i mean i've never smelled vetiver in air naturally like this it's my first time so i'm pretty excited and happy as well i would advise anybody you know get opportunity to visit any places like this it's like the whole delight for olfactory senses and this is mary mary this is mary jane i mean this happens in india everywhere it grows i mean i feel like in heaven to do okay guys we have field distillation unit here which is more like hydro distillation plant this is how the machines are this is where hydro steam distillation so there where there we steam distill the essential oils this is their quality assessment lab probably i'll be sending out my fragrances for getting tested here so this everyone knows this looks familiar this dig bhapka the traditional unit they have uh, this is more like demon I, i think it's functional as well so what they do they put the flowers inside most of the ethyl lovers know it they heat it up the whole fumes are passed through essential oil here and see this what i found whatever roots let me smell it so yeah okay i smell quite dry not too green so this is uh, what they would be distilling hey we are at aroma processing plant now and it's a huge factory like set up this is steam distillation unit out here wow i mean it's first time i'm visiting anything like this and it's we use perfumes every day and this is what holds goes into the whole manufacturing this is the reaction unit this is solvent extraction unit so have you ever thought that this much goes into the perfume making when you actually use them so there's solvent stripping unit i'm pretty much not sure how the whole thing works but i would definitely like to know i think these are the raw materials and there is glass line reactor and fractionation unit i would be googling each and every term what the fractionation mean so let's see and this is for you guys you could have a look at how the natural perfumes are being made here and this is the whole extraction unit okay this is something interesting i see this is called uh, clevenger apparatus where the whole leaves are being boiled here the steams pass through and collects here as the oil so this is how they extract you know from the leaves and i could see there are vetiver also being extracted vetiver roots there's some more apparatus out here this is the instrumentation lab where they mostly do gcms and other uh, other qu quantitative analysis for various fragrances and these are i think the most advanced lab in the country so this is the place to be guys if you want to get into perfumes be a perfumer or get into the no technically or pick up as a profession so we are at uh, fragrance flavor creation lab out here and this is how it looks okay we are in the fragrance lab or these are some developed flavor flavors and these are some unique flavors which i haven't even heard of like imagine rice flavor i've just tested rice i'm going to tell you how it smells like it's like when you're cooking rice you, the smell you get from pressure cooker the same smell is this one that is quite unique tea masala i tried this is also very pungent tea vibe out here this is jaljeera i mean everyone's favorite in summers and you will see sweet fennel these are what they are developed it these are under development new raw material which are under trial so i am pretty excited to see this this is cinnamon propionate uh this is capsicum oleo interesting cumin oil sitnep oil caramel these are being developed now so these are not yet complete i'm not sure whether i'll be able to smell them right now because they are not complete and these are the flavor raw materials you see so this possibly everything i'm going to tell you few names because reading out everything not possible this is ginger oleo resin geranium oil geranium oil and ginger oleo again glycerol i'm going for the known names which i could actually no methyl I am not not sure. We have musk emerald. Yeah, if you guys have seen my previous video, I've always shown musk musk as the waxy substance. This is how the musk emerald looks like. This is menthol bold. Menthol has been you know the largest produced 
um, from India, the menthol has been produced largely, so they have done quite a research on menthol. And nutmeg oil, I can see here. And there are a lot of other oils as well. This is like, guys, here I want to smell all of these. I know them, but I, it, it looks like I'm gonna enroll here and probably spend a year to get the know of the thing. Okay, we are back in another library. Guys, here is the library. Actually, the formulation created by students out here, the researchers out here, and th these include some of the hard to find or hard to formulate substances as well. Uh, there is Chinese geranium, I can see. So there are quite a lot of them. Imagine how vast is the whole world of natural perfumery. I'm, I'm sure even the synthetics would have more variants, but these are all natural we are talking about. There is thyme oil, there is cinnamon oil, I mean, everything, everything you probably ever heard of. Are sunflower I can see, sandal I can see, lime, neem tulsi, vanilla AG, these are blends and coconut fragrance, there's patchouli, lemon and I, I cannot read out some names so I'm just going by the selective reading out here but it's all natural that's one thing and there would be there would be some blends, I, I see some chemicals as well like uh, these these names but what i do the flavors being used here mostly all this is more like a lab out here or a collection of the oil okay guys we have just done tour of uh, ffdc and i really like what they have said here go out with a fragrant step we have just done a uh, tour of ffdc and it was all inspiring i learned a lot about natural ingredients how the whole thing works luckily in this auto, I got my Bluetooth connected and there's a rich curry for playing. Now we are moving to uh, some of the extraction unit, the traditional extraction unit. So I'm gonna show you those as well, how the real work happened. I'm gonna show you that. We are in streets of Karnoj again in this one of the traditional factories out here. I'm gonna show you how things happen. This is how it looks. It's more of a bada, kind of, and more of a plot converted into a traditional factory so these are the woods they use for burning these are the kulhars these are the diyas if you see that is i'm showing you how they manufacture mitti attars here so these are the fresh kulhars or the fresh what they say earthen pots that they use in india quite a lot so they put this into the distillation unit so that is how they do and this has been uh residual so that is residual of shamama attar so there are a lot of herbs in there and the residual of uh, the mitti attar surprisingly if you smell this right now this has gone no smell there's no smell to it the smell has been extracted so i just smell the fresh one and you could actually smell the soil and this is the extracted one absolutely nothing so this the magic the whole fragrance has been extracted this is how the whole unit is I've, I've showed in the previous one, this is the live, where it's actually hot water, where the whole fumes of the soil, the residual where I showed has been passed and extracted out here. So this is how they make the traditional mitti attar. And finally, this is the end result, which is the mitti oil in there. I'll be testing this out, The what's the produce of this particular yield, I'll be testing it out. So that's the result. And this is the final outcome. We saw the mini ones, but this is, they combine entire thing into this. This is, I cannot smell it right now. I could all smell is like those, that muddy puddle feel right now. Uh, let me apply it. Okay, so that's the oil. I've already shown you what is there in the institute, but this is where the real thing happens. This is from those uh, big digs. This is what it attached at the end and it's pretty heavy out here. And this is shamama what you see here and this going to be stored in these cases for macerating and look at this guys it smells amazing this saffron and shamama so probably they have um, processed saffron and shamama in two different phases to get this combination so okay, these are the traditional containers they actually use. It's made of camel leather, but the new ones they make from the buffalo leather. I've done pretty much research on leather as well. This keeps the whole attar preserved and kind of provides 
uh, water absorption mechanism for it. So these are like the hardcore traditional cases. And if if in case I ever launch, I'm gonna have like a tola bottles of similar ones. I'll show you in the video. I've collected quite a lot of them. So guys, it's my final day at the launch. I have to go back to Lucknow and then Ahmedabad. And uh, one thing I've realized, you know, it's a connect with the nature, the agriculture here. That is why, you know, the whole industry has been uh, here from ages. Okay, sir, welcome to yet another episode. We are leaving from Kannauj, so I, we want to show what we have picked up, why I was here, because I have shown you most of the places around, but I really haven't shown the others because the whole city is known for others. Because I have mean, uh, visited a lot of direct manufacturers, I visited the shops as well. But shops are really retail, but if you want to get the real thing, the what I was looking for to make perfumes out of them, to sell them individually or however, so I need to meet uh, manufacturers. So I met a lot of manufacturers, some half a dozen of them. And uh, yeah, some of them allowed me to shoot there, which I've included as snippets and some them. So what I've picked up, so I'm basically making two ranges altogether. The one is called the basics range. So from basics, of course, there has to be the first one. So this is the best quality Mitti Atar I could pick up. That's, and the manufacturer has guaranteed that. Second one is sandwood oil. This I'll be using. Like here we have seen most of the base has been used as this one, sandalwood oil. So I'll be using it more as the base. This is uh, Mutia oil which is Jasmine Sambak, uh, one of the best quality as I'll be testing it more. I picked up a lot of samples as well. This is Vetiver Absolute or Khas. This I've picked up where the Kanoj is special for, known for. I picked up a Shamama. Now this is a very basic entry level shamama though it is very expensive otherwise if we see I, I think out of the whole thing this is the most expensive one i have uh, but this is basically i found more subtle and lesser complex i will be sharing uh, more reviews because i have picked up around five shamamas altogether. this is called mall shri which is an indian flower this i have picked up for using in one of my creations rishikesh the whole hunt was finding the best ingredient the floral ingredient for Rishikesh, I'm making version 2 of it. This is rose oil, the Indian rose oil that I have picked up. Then I have Kevda. I have shown the whole plant, plant as well for Kevda. So this is, these are the major ingredients that I will be using. This is the basic one I am carrying. Uh, another shipments are there. The samples I have picked up quite a lot of them. These are more or less, these are the sample bottles which I have. More of these are there which I'll be covering once I reach the base and I'll be reviewing all of them, what, what I found, what's my discovery as a first time after user, what was my experience, all of these I'll be covering in my next video. For now, it's time to say goodbye to Kannauj. I've, I've been wrapping up. It's as I posted in one of my social posts and this was the best room I could find it here. There is, um, there's no, there are, there are OU rooms, but they're not Many on make my trip, I got only three search results I could not choose from on Airbnb. There's absolutely no place to live here. So you have to come here, find out a place. And in 20 kilometer radius, this was the best room I could found. But again, we could get, get work done anywhere. That's the spirit. So with that, I am saying adieu to Kannauj. I'm taking a lot of learnings, a lot of next time visit plans as well. I have thought of few ideas which I'll be implementing on my second visit after coming here. Who can watch? It's more here. Signing off. See ya.